This video introduces general observations of neurologic status and then focuses on examination of the cranial nerves, including assessment of the motor and sensory portions of cranial nerves 1 through 12, and examination of the sensory system, including assessment of pain, temperature, light touch, and vibratory sensations, as well as position sense and discriminative sensations. In this video, the examiner will assess a healthy patient. Your patients may have the same normal findings or may exhibit normal variations or abnormal findings. To perform the neurologic examination efficiently, combine portions of it with other parts of the assessment, such as the interview. When talking with the patient, observe the patient's mental status, speech, mood, memory, and orientation. That is the reason for the headaches. To assess its function, first be sure both nasal passages are patent. Any problems? No. Then, with one of the patient's nostrils occluded and his eyes closed, pass a mildly aromatic and familiar substance, such as vanilla, cloves, soap, or coffee, under the open nostril. If the patient detects the smell, ask him to identify it. Breathing. Repeat this test on the other side. Cranial nerve 2, the optic nerve, mediates vision. I'd like to test your vision now. If you could hold to assess its right function, hand. check the patient's visual acuity and visual fields and inspect the optic fundi. Can you read the numbers on that? If a Snellen chart is not available, Nine, test visual acuity three, by using a special handheld eye card. Eight, to do this, ask the patient two, to cover one eye hold the card about 14 inches away from his eyes, and read aloud the smallest print possible. Four. If the patient requires reading or general purpose glasses or contact lenses, he should wear them. Can you cover up the other then eye? test the other eye. Thank you. For screening purposes, visual fields are tested by confrontation. Face the patient directly and imagine a glass bowl encircling the head. Ask the patient to look with both eyes into your eyes. Then place your hands about two feet apart, lateral to the patient's ears. Then slowly move the wiggling fingers of both hands along the imaginary bowl until the patient identifies them. Repeat this action in the upper and lower temporal quadrants. Normally, a person sees both sets of fingers at the same time. I'd like you to cover up your left eye. If you think you've found a visual field I'd defect, like such as loss of vision in the right temporal field, Slowly move your wiggling fingers from the defective area of the field toward the better vision. Repeat this at several levels until you can define the border of the defect. These responses suggest a defect throughout the temporal half of the field. Test the other eye for an accompanying defect. Next, inspect each ocular fundus by using an ophthalmoscope. Assess the optic nerve by inspecting the optic disc. Note its color, the sharpness of the margins, and the width of the physiologic cup. Begin the sensory examination by assessing like pain down. sensation in the arms, legs, and trunk. To do this, use the sharp end of a safety pin or other suitable tool. Ask the patient to close his eyes. Then, starting with the arms, Test scattered areas, occasionally substituting the blunt end for comparison between sharp and dull. I like you to say sharp or dull. Then compare sharp. sides and distal and proximal sharp. areas. Dull. Complete yes. the evaluation of pain sensation with the legs. Yes. Okay. I'm going to bring your gown. Next, test the anterior trunk. If you detect any abnormalities, evaluate the posterior trunk. Okay. Keep your eyes closed again. If All pain right. sensation is abnormal, test the patient's response to oh. temperature. Hot. I'd like you to keep your eyes closed, and I'm going to touch you again with the cotton. Say now when you feel it. Assess light now. touch with a cotton wisp. Now. Check the patient's is trunk. This? the same as this? Yes. Is this the same as this? Yes. And say now again? Now. Arms. Now. And now. legs. Now. 
now. Is Compare sides. The same as this. Yes. Is this the same as this? Yes. Is this and proximal and distal this. areas. Keep your eyes Next, closed. assess vibratory sensation using a lightly vibrating low-pitch tuning fork. Place the vibrating fork firmly over the distal interphalangeal joint of a finger and ask the patient to tell you what he feels. Vibration. Ask the patient to tell you when the sensation stops, stops. then stop the vibration. Stop. Now test the other side. Normally, vibratory sensation is intact distally. If it is diminished, proceed to more proximal bony prominences, such as the wrist and elbow. Once again, tell me what you feel. Vibration. Tell me when it When stops. assessing vibratory sensation of the stop. lower extremity, start with the big toes. Compare sides. Feel. Vibration. If vibratory sensation is diminished, check the ankle, patella, and iliac crest. Keep in mind that distal vibratory sensation may normally decrease with age. I'm going to move your toe For the next part of the exam, test position first. sense. To do this, hold the sides of the patient's big this toe with your thumb and index finger. And Avoid touching the other toes. Now, can you first, me move it down? up and down, identifying each position as the patient yeah. watches. Next, ask the patient to close Push his eyes point. and identify the direction of motion. Then, move the big toe up and down in an irregular sequence. Compare yeah. with the big toe on the other foot. In a similar fashion, test position sense in the upper extremities using a finger on each yeah. hand. To test stereognosis or object identification, place a familiar object in the patient's hand. Ask him to identify it. It's a key. Repeat the procedure on the other hand using a different object. It's another object. It's a button. To test number identification or graphesthesia, can you use a blunt object to draw a large number on the palm using a single continuous stroke. Seven. The number should face the patient, not the examiner. Test one palm, then the other. Nine. Two-point discrimination is tested by asking the patient if he's been touched in one or two areas. Sure. Using two ends of an opened paper clip or the sides of two pins, one. repeatedly touch the patient's finger pad with the two points two. at the same time and with one point occasionally. Ask one. the patient to identify if he's being touched with one or two, two points. Then reduce the distance between the points so that you can determine the minimum distance at which one. the patient can identify two points. On the finger pad, the distance should two. be less than five millimeters. To test Here. point localization, touch a point on the patient's skin. Here. Then ask him to open his eyes and point to the place Here. touched. This test is especially helpful on the trunk and Here. legs. Here. To test now extinction, to simultaneously closed. stimulate corresponding areas on both sides of the body. Then ask the patient Here. to point to where he was touched. Normally, he should feel the sensation in both areas. Here and here. In summary, the neurologic examination of the cranial nerves and sensory system includes general observations of neurologic status, examination of the cranial nerves, including assessment of the motor and sensory portions of cranial nerves 1 through 12, and examination of the sensory system, including assessment of pain, temperature, light touch, and vibratory sensations, as well as position sense and discriminative sensations.